Hey guys, this is Abe Chen. Welcome back to the Be Bound podcast. We are here uh, in Jackson, Tennessee. This is the Tennessee series in season two of the Be Bound podcast. I'm with a bunch of unbounders around the table. It is late at night. We are having some unbound conversations. So Peyton Holiday here. Tell us why we're here in Tennessee. Uh, we have gathered here to just have some fun and also do a little bit of history because we're going to the Shiloh Battlefield tomorrow. As well as today, we went to the Casey Jones Museum. If you don't know what that is, you should check it out. And it's also been really cool to just have these conversations and get to know one another better and build each other up and just come together and have a little bit of community that we don't have in our lives back at home. Exactly. All right. So if we can go around and just uh, say who we are. So right next to me is... Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's asleep. <Yeah. laughs> right next to you, snoozing in the next seat, is Johnny Emick. Um, I am. I graduated through Unbound in 2019 with my bachelor's in business administration, and uh, I have been working with the cabinet and various other teams for the last few years. Awesome. Yep, man. Trent Emick, 2021 student cabinet and CDC, degrees work in progress. Okay. I'm Peyton Holiday. I graduated in 2018, and I just am one of those alumni who never leaves. <laughs> I'm Titus Schurter, still working on my degree, um, and this is not alcohol, this is tea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Rebecca Barnes, still working on my degree as well, and looking for the next position in the next phase of life. Mm-hmm. Jordan Ulrich, college dropout, <laughs> and currently vice president in an insurance company. I'm Tama Phillips, and I'm just finishing up my degree in communications, and I work for the Unbound channel. Well, YouTube channel and other stuff, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> As you can see, yeah, a pretty diverse group within the community, different classes, different majors, different generations, all that. So, Generations? Uh, wow. Well, <laughs> I'm not that old. <laughs> okay, we're the right here. I, I have heard about Donnie over <laughs> 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 Donnie is next to me. If you're watching this, you see what's going on. Donnie has his pillow out. It is, again, it is... And his um, coffee. It is late. <laughs> it, is, it is early. It is early. Yeah, it is early. early. We're at that point in the day where you have been smiling so much so that your facial muscles are getting tired. <laughs> so, yeah, but I remember when I was at Apex, one of these Apex uh, recent ones, I think it was 2019, and Jordan Ulrich, um, I sit down at a table, Jordan Ulrich introduces me as an oldie. He's like, oh, this is one of the real old. I'm like, yo, bro, like, wait till you give me some real old. <laughs> I, AKA the guy sitting next to me. <laughs> yeah, no, I have serious senioritis. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, seriously, okay, Stan, you've been to every single Apex. Yeah, yeah, it's been a... Since uh, 2014. Yeah, CPE three A. Oh, yeah, uh, CPE three. Yeah, it was the first one, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, it was. It was it's really funny because you, you're like all the people who were still involved there, like I still are connected to it in one way or another. So that is really cool. And so yes, <laughs> definitely different generations. <laughs> so one cool thing we did is um, we have a bunch of questions that uh, have we've written down that have been circling around, and I'm going to pick three um, to see what we're going to do. All right, so. I guess I'll just go ahead. One, two, three. I'll read these out. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I'm just gonna. I'm going by length here. All right. So the first question is, who is Steve? Great question. Mm. The second question is, uh, how do you create creativity? <laughs> Good question. Um, how do you have confidence in your worth yet still have a servant's attitude uh, in the workplace? Wow, really good stuff. Ha, I scored two out of three. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie was kind of rigging the book because he's adding a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, which one should we tackle, guys? Start with the shortest one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Who is Steve? Well, uh, so who well that's us? going generationally because yeah. really, like, that's a couple we, years before some yeah, of us. So for the record. It's, yeah, that's, that's very, really very, old very The answer to that question is we don't know and you don't know either. Well, yes. <laughs> but he's there. But he is always there. Nope. 
I have um, no context. Well, I mean, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what, 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 what I ate in the legend of Steve real quick. Yes, yes. I, I wish too. this is when we need our, our, our fearless leader, Jonathan Brush, because mm-hmm. <laughs> he tells the best, but we'll have somebody fill in. Well, we, uh, how about we just do this? We just say, Steve is the ghost of Apex. If you want to know more about Steve, just ask Jonathan yourself. Or come to Apex. Or yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. Or ask Jonathan at Apex. Yeah. Ooh. Exactly. Yes. Mm-hmm. Very much so. All right. And speaking of Apex, yes, we have Apex coming up. Uh, Apex whoop, is whoop. August 14th to the 16th, right? 18th. I'm sorry, the 18th. Yes, that's right. Yeah, we want Apex to be a bit longer than what I just said. <laughs> 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 yeah, so definitely come to uh, Apex if you can. And um, yeah, Steve is uh, very real. Mm-hmm. I'll say that. Um, I love the other questions. So one is talking about how do you create creativity and also... How do you have confidence in your work? And can I just say, like, in a way, I can see how these are a little, I mean, they're different, mm-hmm. but they're a little related of, like, mm-hmm. how do you create something and be confident in that? Mm-hmm. Maybe we can touch on that. Mm-hmm. Especially, like, and I think confidence, um, can I just say, as someone who uh, is a videographer and <laughs> is more in the creative field, that's something I struggle with a lot of, like, how do I be, you know, confident in my work? Um, and what I do. Could we start off with a brief working definition for what we mean by confidence? Like whoever wrote this question. Yeah. Because I feel like we have a, a confusion exactly. over like confidence and pride. Exactly. So. It, it was me. So the definition for confidence is, Abe and I got into a discussion recently about this, and it was in a sense of when you're bidding for jobs or you're applying to jobs, and people ask, well, what, you know, like your hourly wage, for example, mm-hmm. and you know your experience, you have multiple avenues you've experienced, you have multiple years, yet you still have that, oh, I should just take the lowest of what they ask mm-hmm. or what they mm-hmm. offer because, like, that's the servant attitude. Mm-hmm. When a couple of weeks in, you're like, I am really not being paid what I'm <laughs> worth, and this is really causing a lot of, you know. But before going into that, having the comments of, like, no, I have. I gained experience. I do have credibility. I have references. And how do you, I guess, pitch yourself mm-hmm. in a positive yet mm-hmm. humble mm-hmm. way in the workplace? I think it depends on the workplace. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like, if you're in a very worldly environment, you're mm-hmm. going to have to be more focused on yourself than if you're in, say, like a church environment or a ministry environment. Mm-hmm. So I think it really depends on the job you're applying for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think asking advice from other people rather than just being like, you know, I think I'm worth a lot. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, yes. <laughs> what do other people think of mm-hmm. my work capabilities? And I think looking at the factors of like, how much is it going to cost to live in this area? Mm-hmm. Like if you're going to have to move, how much will it cost to move? And then looking at the expenses of food and figuring out what can I live on? And then if I want to say put back a thousand dollars a month in savings, then adding up how, how much that would be for you, that's a really good way to figure out your levels of what you're willing to go far down to and willing to go up to. Because yeah. I'll say for myself with the current job that I have, I went through the expenses of like, this is how much an apartment costs, this is how much food will cost, and I need such and such amount a month. And then I want to save money. So if I want to save money, I want this extra amount a month. And then I was able to get almost the exact price that I needed to make all my savings goals, which was really awesome. Mm. That's a good point. It it does provide a more positive because you're not just wanting to make money. You're like, well, I do have also like financial savings goals, which Mm -hmm. actually is pretty empowering. And I never thought about that. So Mm -hmm. thank you, Fane. Yeah. And I think that's that's a really good perspective to have when I'm trying to come to this with the attitude of humility and the Mm -hmm. attitude like, the there's a much more practical side perhaps to it than just like oh i'm worth this it's not Mm -hmm. it's no i have the confidence to get this what do i need and then that's where you can set it can i push back on that a little bit (laughs) okay because i understand why you're saying that but then at the same time i come from a mindset of like i'm gonna work really hard to earn the money that i'm earning so like what you are saying, well, I need this much to survive on, or, and I want, like, you could say, I want to save a million dollars a month, and it's like, I'm not going to get a job, like, I mean, you, I feel like your pay should be based on your work, 
and like mm -hmm. your work ethic and the, what you can provide to the company that you're working oh, for. Oh, yes. So like, that's not pride. It's like, I'm working really hard, so I should be getting paid <laughs> yeah. to do that. Well, it's, it is true. It's, I, like, God. it's market research. Like, mm -hmm. if you actually look at what's what you're doing, who's doing a comparable job, mm -hmm. you know. Um, what yeah, but that's you, different than what you can survive on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's, I, I would say it's a combination of both because you have mm -hmm. to do, you have to do the, the, you know, what do I actually need to make, like Peyton's point, and then you also need to do the market research is it is what I'm trying to do realistically going to cover what I need? Mm -hmm. And um, that's something, especially on the entrepreneur on the entrepreneurial side, yeah. that becomes a major thing because mm -hmm. you got to be able to look at what you're doing from an unbiased perspective. Even though we all know that when you're working on something like that, you're completely biased. You got to try to not be. <laughs> and from that perspective, you got to look at it with like a, a a and basically go, okay, is this actually going to do all this stuff? Um, because you might set your mind on something that is like, you know, I, I don't know, I, I want to do something that's, that's not work for me, but nobody is willing to pay me for it because it's not work for them either mm -hmm. or, you know, or something like that. And so the, it, you got to make sure you balance both of those. I, I think perhaps there is a synthesis here between the two ideas. Um, and maybe the, the, the factor is job level because for what I'm thinking of is my entry level job, there's a minimum that I'm going to need. And I could not work below that. And so this is sort of how I factor that. And usually when I'm coming into an entry level position, yeah. I guess I'm thinking more of I really don't have a lot to contribute to this specifically as far as my experience. If I was coming in and negotiating something where there's there's no world in which this job would pay me just like my subsistence mm -hmm. rate wage then it would be a very different conversation because you're like i am working really hard and i could like i am working more than just money to survive mm -hmm. right. well, well go ahead Peyton. oh i was going to say another thing in light of what everyone else is saying sometimes you have to be willing to do several jobs like it's not just a this is my one job and i'm not going to work anywhere else but maybe the job isn't going to pay that what you need and being willing to be like, okay, I'm going to do this side thing or I'm going to help this person out or I'm going to find someone who will let me do a job on my own time schedule. Because sometimes that is the reality. You're not going to find a job that's going to meet your needs. So you're going to have to work maybe two jobs or stop doing school and focus on work for a while and then go back to school. Like, Everyone's story is very different, and you can't compare, and you can't say this is the one way to do something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the big things is that as you're like as you're going through this process, like uh, you're talking about, like if it's an entry level job, you got to keep in mind it's an entry level job. Um, I mean, I think about like all the time I've spent working for like unbound teams, just student leadership teams, and I know a lot of you guys have too. And that stuff is all like it's a lot of work. It's stuff that's literally that's literally just coming from like I want to gain experience and I want to help other people. Mm -hmm. And and so when you're doing that stuff, it's not stuff that's that's filling up the bank account, but it is stuff that's incredibly fulfilling in other ways, and then sometimes has some other perks to it, like you know, traveling and mm -hmm. be with people and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, and so. And we were we were talking the other day about like with the cabinet, you know, you work for a year to get a five hundred dollar event, you know, like to go to this thing <laughs> and then work the entire time. <laughs> but there's so much more you get out of mm -hmm. it, and so it's about the whole process, not just the the end goal. So, yeah, ultimately, when it's career time, like yeah, you have to kind of make those more calculated decisions. Uh, but early on, you have to recognize, you know, where you are in life. Mm -hmm. Some wages are not meant to be livable it's it's an entry yeah. level job and yeah. it's just it's not something you're supposed to stay there forever exactly and i want to also speak to the value of internships mm -hmm. like their work that you do for free a lot of them but they are so valuable to help you gain in the work field that you're looking to go into and for my own personal story i interned in dc i made a hundred dollars a week I mean, that's not livable in D.C., <laughs> but because I had that internship, it opened the door to other jobs in other areas. And I would totally recommend, you know, even if you do have to move somewhere for three or four months for an internship, it is very much worth it to help you move forward in the job world. And one little last touch on that that I would add is that if you are fortunate enough to find yourself employed by a small business, just make yourself indispensable. 
That's key mm-hmm. because then you can very quickly rise up through the ranks of a small business faster than you can in a corporate company. Mm-hmm. And without really even having the proper credentials, you can find yourself in a much higher position that you wouldn't have ever had the opportunity to before. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I think I'm on the little bit opposite side of or opposite perspective of a lot of people probably who are listening to this podcast, a lot of people here. Whereas I'm coming from a perspective of the one hiring the people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's always really hard when you have people that are coming in and they're like, I have to earn this exact amount. And if you don't offer this me, me this amount, I'm gone. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, when we get those applications in, we don't even look at them Mm -hmm. because they're not willing to work with us and give us what we need in order for us to be able to get, have the opportunity to give them what they need then. Mm-hmm. So you have to sometimes be willing, okay, at the start, I'm going to maybe take a little bit of a pay cut. And then that way I can prove myself to them. And then just be like in the month, in a month, two months, three months after you start the job, when you first are doing your interviews, like, okay, I'll start at that amount. But is it okay if in two months or three months we come back, we review this, if I'm hitting all the goals that you want me to, can we talk about increasing my pay at that point? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So getting, like setting any sort of negotiated standard like that is like, is a really great advice because I don't think initially to me, something like that would actually like, I wouldn't even think of that. Like, <laughs> it would, and, and so like having something where you think about how do I actually because as a business owner or, or operator or whatever, as you're going through that stuff, you have to make sure that you, like you, your job is just as much on the line as the person who you're, who wants the job. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's like a balancing act where you have to make sure that everybody gets as much out of it. So you got to find the middle ground. Yeah. And plus, too, with like you going in to work at a new job, the person who's interviewing you kind of has a whole lot more to think about than you do. Because they have to figure out, okay, is this person going to work hard? Are they going to work well? Are they going to do what we need them to? Are they going to be able to fit into the community that we already have here at our office? Are they going to be able to help us, support us? Are they going to be able to do what we need them to do? And so I feel like instead of just, I really need this job to pay the bills. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or I really want this job because it's the job that I want. Service with a smile. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's well, a lot that goes into it. And you have to you have to remember both sides of it when you're going into that. Well, I think also negotiating is really good, like mm-hmm. you said. But the biggest thing with job stuff is networking, mm-hmm. knowing people mm-hmm. and like even, hey, we're in the Unbound community. Post something on Facebook for what job you're looking for. Mm-hmm. And I guarantee you, even if there's someone who's not in the community, they'll know someone who can help you. Mm -hmm. Like I've seen that many times and I've even helped friends get jobs who are not in unbound Mm -hmm. because I, someone in unbound was like, Hey, I'm looking to hire this person. And I sent them the application. And next thing I know they're hired. Like it's actually really cool to work the network you have with unbound. So definitely take advantage of that. And I'll say on a personal level, if, if you know me or not know me, like if you're looking for a job, reach out because I know a lot of people looking for all sorts of job stuff and mm-hmm. I'd be willing to help you out. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, it's interesting you say that about like Facebook and stuff. Just posting something on Facebook because the first time I ever interacted with another Unbound student was when they posted on Facebook and they said, Hey, I'm thinking about working in insurance. Does anybody here do that? And would they be willing to talk? And so I was like, Oh, yeah, I do that. Just. <laughs> Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well, let me know. Hit me up. Exactly. Like, so. there's so many people in this community, and everyone that I have met are so willing to help you. And even if you're, you know, don't even know what the job is, like, just say, hey, I don't even know if I want to go in this field, but I'm interested in knowing more about yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Message the group. Like, mm-hmm. we'll help you out. And even on the forums, if you're not on Facebook, or even, I mean, if you have someone's phone number, call them up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. So the sort of bring this back around to the original question, like how do we have confidence um, while also having a servant's attitude? I think um, we we sort of answered that with, I think Donnie called it market research. Like we have to have an understanding of what we're going into. And one of the best ways we can do that is through our networking and through the connections with people Mm -hmm. and asking like, hey, like maybe this is something that we've done and you can get a better idea or just 
putting in in the work to look at okay what are other people in some positions getting paid and mm -hmm. also what do i need and is this job going to meet them mm -hmm. I think, yeah. yeah, I really appreciate your perspective. I brought it up because as I've, I've watched students, you know, graduate, I've watched students, you know, move on in life, there has been a little bit of like, well, I did my college differently. I was homeschooled or I was mm -hmm. like, everything was different in their life. And there's a, there's a hesitancy when you get into, into corporate, you're like, am I, what do I, what do I project <laughs> What am I projecting? When in reality, they don't know that you ran a conference for 500 students and you kept everyone alive or you know they don't know that kind of stuff so how do you present in a very humble and yet you know yeah. that transition into like full adulthood realizing okay yes I still have my connections I still have my friends but what does it look like now in a, in a corporate setting yeah so. I'll say from a perspective of the current job that I have in my interview they asked me two questions one of them being what is a situation in which you messed up and how did you fix it and then um the other question, I can't remember at the moment, but it was helpful to have that question. And I had an answer about a situation, I think it was even with Unbound. And then I had another question, another interview about what's something that you have organized. And I told them about how I organized 90 transfer credits into Liberty University and was able to graduate with a four-year degree in two years. And like just being willing to pull those examples out when you're asked questions in interviews is a better way to be humble about it than just being like, hey, let me tell you about this cool thing I did. And it's like when they ask that question, you can answer it and it's not as in your face, I'm an awesome person. Yeah. yeah. And a corollary to that would be be honest about your accomplishments, mm -hmm. like take an objective look at your life or you work with a, a coach or a mentor to be like, what are the things that I've accomplished? Present those very honestly and be very careful not to exaggerate in any way, because I think there's a temptation when you are in an interview to exaggerate yourself a little bit or to downplay yourself a little bit. And just like having that right on, not over exaggerating, not selling myself short, but like this is an honest evaluation of who and what I am. Is this a good fit for your company? Yeah. Um, or, or, or is your good is your company a good fit for me? And yeah. just having that conversation. And it is an art. It, yeah. it takes practice to uh, be honest with yourself. Because again, it's it's difficult to talk about yourself. You're either mm -hmm. like you said, way too proud mm -hmm. or way too like fake humble, which is also yeah. being proud. I would say one thing. So I interviewed with the Trump administration and the guy was asking me all these questions and he said, well, do you have any questions for me? And I said, well, how did you get your job and why do you love it? And he was like, no one's ever asked me that. That's so like question. be willing to ask them questions like, why do you love your job? What would you recommend someone like me to do? And even if they don't give you the job, if they give you recommendations for what you could do to get the job in the future, that goes a long way because they'll remember you. Like, make sure in your interview that you are remembered. Hmm. That goes a lot farther than you have the accomplishments for the job. Yeah. That's great. Uh, one of the things I was popping in my head a little bit as you were talking about kind of the tightest and more introspective side of understanding and being honest with yourself in a job interview situation is being honest with yourself also has a myriad of benefits tied to if you are comfortable with who you are, then you're probably in not a great spot. <laughs> Generally, if, if you're being honest with yourself, you will find something to improve or something to fix. So comfortable isn't the right word, but satisfied is. So be honest with yourself so you can improve yourself and make yourself more marketable, either in the present or in the future. Being willing so. to learn, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now we can do a little bit of a different conversation of the difference between being comfortable with who you are and being confident in who you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because when you, yeah. Well, and sort of going back to the original question of, you know, confidence, but also what it, how do you create creativity? And, you know, you can be very creative in your interviews and you can bring out things that people not normally would bring out like you're an unbound student you are doing education very differently from the average american yeah. so be creative in your interviews and talk about what you're doing with school like what project are you doing i mean i'm sure if you're watching videos you've seen people and their projects and what they're doing and it's like 
what other students are doing these projects. Like, be creative. The job may not be about something in your project, but be like, hey, I worked on this project of a podcast with other students. Like, sure, you may not be applying to work on a podcast, but the fact that you've done something that's not average or ordinary can go a long way, too. I think, like, just the, that idea of creating creativity. I think this is coming from the perspective of a person who is very much not creative. Uh, if you guys have, who are listening to this have taken the leadership courses, you'll hear about the team triangle and the personal triangle and the create, coordinate, connect. I'm not on the create side of that spectrum at all. But what I have done to compensate for that is to force yourself to do creative things and to be with creative people. Mm-hmm. Because the more it's with any skill or or muscle or anything like that, the more you exercise it, the more you step out of your comfort zone and just do it, the easier it gets next time and the better you'll be at it. Yeah. Pretty sure just do it is copyright, so. <laughs> <laughs> just complete it. Just copyright that No, 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 no. Hold to your purpose. <laughs> no, it's like, well, it's when we're talking about like creating and cr- creating creativity uh so i i I am kind of in the same boat like uh i went to the great art projects because i play guitar and i've been teaching lessons for a long time like oh yeah there'll be somebody else who doesn't like paint or draw or sketch (laughs) and uh yeah that wasn't the case (laughs) so i have like i still have these paint brushes from watercolors that i haven't touched since what was that? 2018? 2017. 2017? <laughs> yeah, January 2017. Yeah, so I still have, I still have those in the closet. <laughs> haven't used them since then. Um, and it, that was, and so I kind of identify with that kind of non-creative crowd. But at the same time, I, I work with students on a regular basis, especially with guitar lessons and stuff, where we're trying to get them to like practice their soloing or practice something where they're they're having to be expressive. And one of the things that I've found that really helps is limiting options. If you give them limited options, like, so for instance, like, um, there's a, a, a thing I use frequently, which is doing like one note solos. And so you give them one note and then they have to play over music and they have to make that one note sound as interesting as possible by using various techniques. And by restricting those options, it actually helps you to do more with less. Mm-hmm. And so I think that if you're applying that to like a job type circumstance, like if you're if you're talking about, you know, I, I've only ever had an entry level job in food service or whatever, I'm applying for this other position. How do I make that one note sound so much mm-hmm. more interesting? Mm-hmm. You know, and and this is something that Jonathan Brush has talked about before. You know, if you're if you work in food service, you know, how do you talk about you know your skills with working with uh, with customers, mm-hmm. you know, how do you talk about your efficiency, your ability to be there on time? How do you take all that stuff and make that one note sound more interesting? Mm-hmm. And so it's all about taking the little things and making them more by by looking at your restricted situation and being more and and basically playing it in a different light. Mm-hmm. Totally, and I think that goes back to the whole confidence thing because I really do think that confidence uh, comes from creativity, and it is you know creativity to, again, look at your situation differently. And when you're comfortable, you're not looking to see how you can be creative. You're not really looking to see how you can grow. And I think that is something I see as a difference where there's the people who are uh, comfortable. Yeah, they're they're chilling. They think they've arrived. I've accomplished this. Mm -hmm. And so this is what I've accomplished. Uh, Give me whatever. Give me this job. Give me my paycheck or um, Mm. all these different things compared to confidence in saying that, hey, this is uh, what I do. This is what I would like to do. And finding ways, you know, I've found different ways to do this differently. Will you give me a chance to continue to learn? And so um, I love that point of like having limited options that applies a lot with what I do in video work. Because you never have enough resources or time or just things go wrong. Um, anyone who's worked with me before knows that. And um, even just, taste hey, Star Wars, okay? Like, the first Star Wars was made on a very small budget and they had to make things work, you know? And um, because of that, those movies were... Yeah, very well made. Just, I think we're Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we 
Like, should we just watch as a group today? Um, so, yeah, it's so fascinating to see how um, confidence, uh, yeah, does come from, there. you know, when you've accomplished something uh, with very little, you know, you have the choice of saying, hey, I want to learn more. I'm going to do more. Mm -hmm. And that is confidence compared to, like, hey, I'm done, you know. Mm -hmm. And I do think that there is a tendency to be more comfortable when you have more resources and you're just like, you know what? I did that. I, you know, I had what I needed. I'm good compared to, again, you know, I don't have everything. This, I, I kind of accomplished what I wanted. It was creative. I want to keep going because I know that there are more resources out there I can learn from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And when it comes to also the idea of creating creativity, mm -hmm. Uh, I hear it from a lot of people, and I've done this myself too, it's just the idea that you're a non-creative person. Everybody has an inherent level of creativity in one form or another built into them. So it's part of human nature. It's merely a matter of figuring out the circumstance in which you are creative. And for me, one of the best ways that happened was the cabinet. And I found that my creativity primarily comes from arguing with other people. <laughs> that's when creatively argue? Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> that's when, for whatever reason, my gears fire all in the right directions and I have new ideas. I'm able to reason through things better. For different people, it's different circumstances. But zoning in on that one circumstance, that one format, which you can be creative is essential. And mm -hmm. you can only do it by trying different things. So. Yeah. So did you just like happen upon that circumstance and realized oh wait i'm more creative in this setting or were you like actively seeking out how to grow your creativity like settings wise and just oh well this is the he just had a nerve man <laughs> <laughs> like, i've been arguing all my life <laughs> did, you, did you just get lucky and now you can attest to that <laughs> oh, I gotta be the no, I so uh, it was yeah. it was a little bit of both so when i a little background is when I got into the cabinet, I felt horribly underqualified. Mm -hmm. I kind of applied out of a long shot in that I really wanted to do it, but I felt there was zero chance I was going to get accepted. Mm -hmm. And so when I got accepted, I mean, me and Donnie, we were on a road trip headed down to Florida, and I got the email. I was like, holy crap, I want to get it. <laughs> and so <laughs> from the beginning, I was immediately looking for a place where I could fit in and actually contribute. And so I was, to some degree, measuring where I was making the most contributions. I noticed that that was primarily when either I was just throwing out really bad ideas and just letting that spin and just not caring, or when I was, to some extent, disagreeing or critiquing other people to help find something in the middle ground. Mm -hmm. So... And zoning on in on that, so now I have a better idea of how to create that circumstance in a constructive manner without burning the whole situation down. <laughs> so, <laughs> so to sort of take that and maybe apply it to generally for, for our listeners and for each other here, it was really just going, taking, looking for new experiences, trying new things. Yeah. Even things maybe you didn't feel qualified for yeah. that was, resulted in a growth in character of, oh, wow, this is how I can be more creative. Mm, yeah, yeah, definitely. And to speak to those people who don't have confidence in themselves and their job skills, like maybe you've just worked at a very small job that you don't, didn't, quote, get a lot of experience. I think talking to your supervisor or even talking to your friends and being like, hey, what am I good at? What do I do well with? Mm -hmm. And being able to ask those questions and have people tell you things because you may end up learning something about yourself you had no idea was a thing. Because I know I've asked people stuff and they're like, oh, well, you're really good at this. And I'm thinking, I am. I had no idea. <laughs> and like, and that, that really helps your confidence grow when you let other people speak into your life and you ask those questions. Because when you're not confident and you don't allow other people to speak into your life, you're not growing. Mm -hmm. And it's a tricky uh, question, but it really kind of boils down to you. How much do you want to learn? And I think that, um, you know, there are hey, a lot of, uh, issues with burnout and a lot of issues in all seriousness with yeah you know mental health and, and rest and, and depression and these things um, but I do think that God has given all of us a desire to do something you know yes uh, hopefully it's for good right <laughs> but there is a desire to do something and so I think you know going very deep into our spiritual uh, self it really is tapping into that 
you know, God given desire of like, how can we advance? How can we do things? And ultimately, how do we glorify God? You know, and when you take ownership of wanting to learn, that is when you, you know, try to be creative and you are vulnerable and you talk to people and you gain confidence, like what you're saying, Peyton, from you know, people either critiquing you or mm-hmm. you're pointing out things and all these things. And another thing I thought I would mention is we're talking about like jobs and, oh, you want to get a good job that can help you pay for things. But maybe God has called you to something that is hard and you don't get paid very much, like a missionary. Or God has called you to something that's, you know, literally cleaning the bathrooms. And I guess what to speak to those people, God, if God has called you to that and you can glorify him in that position, and maybe it's not what you think in the big picture will help you and your career, it's going to bring God glory if you're there to serve the Lord and you're there to show people like, hey, I may have the worst job on the on the planet according to the world, but I can stand in this position and I can be the salt and the light and I can make a difference, even though to the world's eyes, it doesn't look like a great job. So while, yes, you want to have a job that is not an abusive situation, like you want to be in a good work environment, obviously, you also want to be where God has called you. And if he has called you to something that's not glor- that's not worldly great, <laughs> don't ever underestimate the difference you can make. Mm-hmm. Any last thoughts before we close up? Go out there and be awesome. Be <laughs> <laughs> unbound. Yes. Yeah, this is really good, guys. Thank you so much for sharing. And uh, if you're listening to this on YouTube or even on Spotify, uh, in the description or notes below, there is uh, there will be links to um, the website to learn more about about. There will also be links to community. Uh, we would love to hear more of your story, um, how you've found confidence or found your creativity, uh, where are clay stories, all that. Um, Join please, the forums. There's yeah. a thread for that. Yeah. <laughs> Join the forums. There is so much there as well. So, guys, thank you for listening. Um, thank you, everyone, for sharing. And I'm, yeah, looking forward to hearing more stories of <laughs> all this, uh, you know, everything that goes on the workplace. Guys, be on the I'll see you guys soon. Thank you.